What's up, everybody? My name is Lehua, and welcome to the Spearfina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator, host of podcasts across worlds, and I stream on twitch.tv slash Lehua Superfina. Today, we are reviewing Dungeon of Black Company, and if you like anime reviews, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell so you'll be notified on the next upload. And if you'd like to support the channel, we got Patreon. Link to that is below. We are reviewing Dungeon of Black Company, Episode 7. What happened in this episode is an explanation of why Ninomiya was summoned. It's really interesting because this episode kind of gave explanations of how things happened. The, the Demon Lord. Last episode, we got to see the Demon Lord. And we noted that she looks like Rim. Well, it's because they're siblings. They were both born from the dungeon. And it turns out that Rim and the Demon Lord are guardians of the dungeon. Guardians of the planet. This part over here, I'm going to read off from the anime because it's a pretty detailed explanation. So the planet that they're on used to be home of the Colonians, C-A-L-O-N-I-A-N-S. And they created magic power and controlled not just the planet, but time and space as well. So that's why Ninomiya was summoned. That's like a space thing and why he was sent to the future that's a time thing if we remember from two episodes ago i believe where ninomiya touched that artifact and it activated which created that portal that sent ninomiya and rim to the future that was made by the colonian then the demon lord explains that the guardians are tasked with managing the circulation of magic power in this world and i'm wondering did the colonians make the dungeons where the dungeons make the guardians like how does that work i'm assuming that the dungeons have the magic power and they just make the guardians like they birth them i'm like wondering okay if you have to birth guardians what makes you birth them and how do the guardians die because this demon lord was actually created when Rim wasn't doing her job. And another thing I'm wondering is how does Rim circulate the magic power? Like what's the process for that? And the dungeons, they have treasures that the guardians are supposed to protect from the humans. When they say humans, do they just mean the people from the surface and such? Because, uh, you know, those people, they've been going to the dungeons, they've been getting the treasures, they've been mining and such, they've been exploring the ruins and whatnot. I'm assuming these ruins, these temples, whatever they were, were the colonians' homes and such. So I'm like, there's a lot of questions I have. Another thing I was wondering about was the Demon Lord. The Demon Lord was created when Rim wasn't doing her job, right? Rim stopped doing her job when she started hanging out with Ninomiya. She wasn't with him that long. So what is the time period for the dungeon to make another guardian? Like, does it wait oh so long? And then does it take oh so long to make another guardian? Like those are the type of questions that have detailed questions. And a confirmation was clarified on why Rome was able to have a human form. It was confirmed by the Demon Lord because they are guardians. They're special. That's why they're able to have like a human form. Anyways, I'm going off topic. So the Demon Lord is explaining that the Ryzaha company they explore through the dungeon some more and they discover the colonial ruins and they discover the technologies and they ended up using the technology making corporate drones and that's where Ryzaha ruined the world making a lot of mindless people and the circulation of magic power was disrupted the colonial technology was being abused and that's where the demon lord stepped in. The guardian stepped in. The demon lord stepped in not to take over the world, but to manage it. The demon lord is like, yo, you guys are messing up with the magic power. And you guys are messing with the technology. We need to put a stop on you. So this makes a lot of sense. Now the circulation of the magic power is very, very important because without it circulating properly, it was affecting the world. And this is what the demon lord said, a mass consumption of magic power using the ruins 
which brought ruin to the world. Consuming huge amounts of magic power without circulating it was a huge problem. It seems like the big problem was Ryzaha was consuming a lot of magic power without circulating it. My question is, how do you circulate magic power? And that's where it led to, if you remember where Bezo was talking about sacrificing heroes, like giving back power to the Majin and such, I'm wondering if that was the circulating of magic power. Like because you were consuming from the dungeons and such, they were giving it back by sacrificing a human. But I'm also kind of wondering, do heroes have that much magic power, like enough to balance it out? Like how much? Like how do you know? Like, oh, I just have so many questions. I feel like the books would have more details. Not too sure. If those of you who've read it, let me know. Anyways, back to episode 7. So the demon lord is explaining this, and then she reveals that Rise of Hot was not destroyed. They actually ran away in a rift with the Colonian's uh, technology. And during this whole conversation, they came back, they came to fight with the demon lord, the rest of the demons and such. And the demon lord is asking Inumiya to help because he's tenacious. He doesn't know when to give up. And Ninuma is like, well, can I go back to Japan? And she's like, yeah, you can go back to Japan. And then she gives him a choice. She did like the red door, blue door kind of thing. One door leads to Japan. The other door leads back to the past where you can fix it and prevent Raizaha from destroying the world. I'm assuming the demon lord wants Ninomiya to prevent Raizaha to discover the colonial ruins and the technology and whatnot. And, you know... When I was reacting to this, I was thinking, guarantee Ninomiya is going to go back to the past because he's petty. He doesn't want Raiza to be powerful. He doesn't want Raiza to get this technology. He's petty. Like, he really doesn't like this company. And that was the reason why he went back in the past because he didn't want Raiza to win. He doesn't want Raiza to be powerful with that technology. And then he thought ahead. He is planning with the rest of her crew. We're all reunited with Wanibe and Shia. The whole crew's back together. He is planning with this party to discover the colonial ruins and technology before Ryza Ha. And he will be the ruler. He will make a new civilization, a utopia, and Wana. He's gonna do world domination. Normally, I don't condone to this stuff, but for him, I'm like, yeah! Rule over them, dominate. But Nino Mia needs to get to the Colonian ruins first, and apparently the floors have gotten a little bit more challenging for some reason. And Belza is keeping a closer eye on him. He's been getting too much attention from her, so I'm assuming she's gonna try to thwart his plans and whatnot throughout the rest of the season. And that concludes my review of Dungeon of Black Company Episode 7. If you've seen this episode and there's anything that I forgot to mention or just did not mention at all and you wanted to be part of the conversation, let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't seen the episode, what's your impression from this review? If you want to talk outside of YouTube, there's a Discord link is in the description. I also stream on twitch.tv slash Superfina. If people watch these videos, like to step by the stream. Outside of YouTube and Twitch, I host podcasts across worlds where we talk about anime, manga, and other things we're interested in. If you like podcasts like that, link to podcasts in the description. We're available on all platforms. Other than that, my name is Lehua, and this is the Superfina channel reviewing Dungeon of Black Company Episode 7. Hope you guys like this video, and I'll see you on the next one. Laters! Huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible. If you also want to be part of the Superfina party, you can click over here or become a channel member. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Hope to see you guys there and I will see you on the next video. This bump.